Hello, it's the top of the day Riley show. <laughs> Welcome to the SETK studios here in sunny Winnipeg, Manitoba. We are the Society for the Ethical Treatment of Kraken, and we would like to send everyone a warm welcome from all of us here to wherever you are out there. Um, I'm Natasha Clausen, the acting president of SETK, also known as Ms. Stella Mumford. <laughs> um, this is my partner in steampunk shenanigans and a very important committee member to SETK, Julia Piva. And uh, we're really happy to have Julia here because we think that it would be really good to have a newly minted steampunks um, perspective on this and a old lady in steampunk uh, perspective. Because, you know, there's a lot of me out there, um, but there's not a lot of, uh, you know, newly minted steampunk people who are willing to admit that they're new. Yes. Right? <laughs> That's always a little bit awkward to say, I have no idea what I'm doing, mm -hmm. but I really like this. Oh, I will admit it freely. <laughs> <laughs> but we love Julia, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today for our seminar on steampunk and all its varied glory. And there's a heck of a lot of varied glory. Oh my god. <laughs> We're here to explain what steampunk is to us as defined by the Society for the Ethical Treatment of Kraken. Our definition is by no means the authority or the only one out there. It's just how we operate under the term steampunk. Mm. This brief sem seminar is like an introduction to the genre of steampunk. It's not the be-all and end-all of the universe, because I don't think there is a be-all and end-all of <laughs> this vast universe right. of steampunk. I don't even know where it begins or <laughs> where it ends. No. Truly. That's the wonderful thing about steampunk, too, is that there really is no defining beginning and end, mm -hmm. no box mm -hmm. that you can put it in. So um, now, just to warn you, uh, SETK has a very broad and inclusive practice when defining steampunk. Um, this can be a little alarming to some of the more traditional steampunk groups out there because they're very uh, staunch about their very particular definition right. of steampunk. They have a very definite box and you should never... Well, it's their definition. <laughs> their definition, yeah. right. But um, so we don't mean to upset. Mm -hmm. Please don't get your bloomers in and on. <laughs> uh, let me explain. Some traditional steampunks believe the de definition of the genre to be as found in Wikipedia. Here we go. Steampunk is a genre of speculative science fiction set in an alternative version of the historic past, especially focused on the 19th century in England and involving an advanced technology usually based on steam power. Now that's important, mm -hmm. steam power, because when you look at the other punks, there's other technologies and powers. Exactly. And that's what kind of breaks them apart. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's good to remember that Victorians are steampunk and they're analog and they're gears. That's why you see a lot of gears and, and steam. Um, many steampunks will add uh, that it's kind of the fu what the future would have looked like had we uh, not gone, you know, digital, stayed analog. Um, the wonderful thing about steampunk is that it's not based on historical accuracy like reenactment groups. It's speculative fi fiction. So we are allowed a lot of latitude in our costuming, mm -hmm. our literature, our stories, our personas, our adventures. I mean, it's kind of nice that way. It really is. I, th I think that brings a lot of people to steampunk because it's not like a hardcore, you got to be right. Mm -hmm. I think that's what you liked about it, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't um, a specific period reenactment group, and uh, I could uh, uh, sort of pick and choose elements of history that I liked. Mishmash them all together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which can look really fun and cool. <laughs> it's a, it, I would think uh, looking at steampunk, maybe seeing it as a reimagining of the past. That's probably a better description. Um, now. Here is where SETK takes a bit of a more permissive and inclusive view of steampunk. And this may be confusing 
but please bear with us. Um, we believe that steampunk is an umbrella term that describes a series of subgenres called the punks. Imagine steampunk being this like beautiful pagoda umbrella with uh, a bunch of subgenres, smaller punks, just like raining down on top of it. <laughs> yeah, because um, we look at it as a hailstorm of punks raining down on top yeah. of an umbrella rather than underneath the wide brim uh, due to the overarching kind of irreverent attitudes that the universe of the punks holds dear. So basically what we mean by that is... Um, the punks are called punk because it's got a punk attitude. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we, we are a stick it to the man. We're pretty cheeky bunch. Um, even if some of us do tend to be a bit stuffy and proper sometimes, mm -hmm. um, underneath it all, uh, we're, we're pretty shenanigans oriented. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, most team punks really enjoy a good shenanigans. So <laughs> um, we're not only all about tea and scones or gears and goggles for that matter i mean it's it's, it's a i don't know it's, there's a lot to love about this universe mm -hmm. so setk adheres to this like renegade philosophy about steampunk because it better represents the multi-universe of denizens that gather at most events and what I mean by that is at any given steampunk convention or event, uh, you will see a motley collection of what? Pirates. Uh, Victorian-esque yeah. society people. Yeah, military. Yeah, both future yeah. and anachronistic. Um, Wild West. Yeah, yeah. adventurers, explorers. Yeah. Um, Fairies, ghosts. Yeah, yeah, plague yeah. doctors. Yes. Oh my God, just anything, really. <laughs> uh, you can steampunk anything. So... Really, mm -hmm. you, you have like the Rocketeer that's steampunked, you have Wonder Woman yep. steampunked, Batman steampunked. I mean, there isn't anything you can't steampunk. Exactly. Oh, and there's time travelers. That's really important too mm -hmm. because uh, that's a huge element of SETK. We have a lot of time travelers, so uh, just a, a heads up on that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, in reality, the people who show up at steampunk events rarely only fit the traditional definition of the genre. Um, steampunk believes that genres or subgenres, as we've referred to them, like uh, diesel punk, apocalypse punk, cyberpunk, ray punk, yeah. uh, all those things, fairy punk, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exist happily in the great and varied universe of steampunk. Yeah. So why? Uh, well, uh, have you looked at the big wide world of the interwebs lately? You push <laughs> steampunk, and boom! It's just like crazy or attended a large steampunk event convention chances are you will not meet purely proper victorian sci-fi folks mm -hmm. you'll see a whole mix of yes them. yeah a lot of pirates there's a lot of burlesque a lot of ladies in burlesque mm -hmm. and even a switch up because sometimes it's victorian and with right. a burlesque kind of dress right. skirt on so nope you will be smacked in the face with all the punks and all their grandeur mm -hmm. an avalanche of diverse images, ideas, and literature that can be, well, incredibly confusing to a newly minted steampunk, I would say, right? For sure. Yeah. <laughs> when you first uh, kind of looked at it, it must have just been like... It was very overwhelming. Yeah. It was like, what do I... What? The overwhelming sensation of what the... <laughs> is often what causes people to reject the hobby. And, and so you're kind of like... Where do I begin? Mm -hmm. There's no real beginning and end in steampunk. There's no defined path that you can follow to become a steampunk. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you're probably still spinning, kind of figuring out. Yes. What? <laughs> probably a few more years of spinning. <laughs> of spinning. I've forgotten all about it because I'm an old lady. I've been doing this for years, so I don't even I don't even remember that moment. But. But I tend to jump into things um, kind of in the deep end, feet first. Julia, you kind of... I'm a little more cautious. <laughs> yeah, you kind of dip your toe, dip yeah. your toe. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, how do you wrap your mind 
around everything you're seeing and encountering. All the myriad philosophies and groups, so many costumes and props and things to build, so many different types of people, mm -hmm. and so many different types of punk, mm -hmm. which I think is the most confusing part of it. So, <gasps> okay, take a deep breath, <laughs> in and out, just like that. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Let Julia and I guide you through the twists and turns of becoming a steampunk. Julia, like I've said, is new to steampunk. She's been a member of SETK for, what, about Pardon? a year or so now? Um, so let's go through her experience to help get a grasp kind of on how to wade into the waters of this genre. So I'm going to ask her a few questions and uh, um, we're going to we're going to hear some of her answers and maybe you'll be able to identify with it and not feel so alone <laughs> the next time you go to an event. Right. So, um, Julia, what was your first experience with like steampunk? Uh, how how what drew you to it? Um, so my first experience was at um, a winter uh, midwinter mid feast. feast. Um, that was I, a, that was a fun. It was <laughs> great. Yeah, it was great. There was a beautiful champagne tower. Oh, and, that was awesome. You know, yeah. the eight course meal was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. That was my first. Uh, real steampunk event. How, how did it? How did it feel? Like when you went, did you feel out of? I felt out very out of place because um, I'm a very conservative and quiet person, so I didn't know. I didn't know what to expect. Um, I felt um, a little bit um, out of your element. Yeah, out of my out of my element. Element. Um, unconfident in what I chose to wear yeah <laughs> but did you feel like it was an accepting environment like did you feel like people when were I like... actually got there yes <laughs> but you know it's the build-up in your head at first I think... then you go there and it was like oh what's I worried about I think that's yeah. the problem yeah it's the it's the anticipation yeah and the dread yeah right but once you get there mm -hmm. yeah we I uh sat with a, a lovely um uh, the mother and daughter duo. Okay, it was uh, yeah, the yeah. daughter's fifteenth or sixteenth birthday, I believe, oh, and yes, it was yes, wonderful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then the champagne tower. I mean, yeah. how many? How, where do you get to see a champagne <laughs> tower? Like seriously, and we snuck that in because yeah. that's actually now a safety violation, which sucks. <laughs> yeah. The champagne towers are like so super cool and fun. Let yeah. me tell you. <laughs> I, it took forever though. Yeah, it was great. It was worth the wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah we had fun that night. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, well, I'm glad to hear that once you got there, uh -huh. you enjoyed yourself. Yeah. And you did you feel once you got there that you were accepted? Oh, for sure. And everything for like sure. Nobody kind of went. No, no, none of that. <laughs> none of that. What are you doing no. here? <laughs> I've been to some um, events with some groups. We won't name names, um, in which you get you go to the the event and you sit there and you're all alone, and people won't talk to you, and you kind of get that look like, wow, well, what are you doing here? You're not one of us, mm. right? And I think that's a little different in the steampunk punk community because I think most people in the steampunk community are there because there is no fitting in. Everybody is accepted. And I think that's what people really appreciate about these groups is that they don't care. <laughs> they really don't care. It's like they don't give a crack. In, yeah. Right. And uh, and, and so I'm, I'm, it's, it's nice to hear that one of my events that you felt comfortable. Oh, all of your events I've been to, I felt comfortable. Yeah, for sure. Julia, actually, uh, <laughs> this is this is a little embarrassing. Um, w the first time I ever met Julia, I honestly don't remember um, because... <laughs> Uh, it was at Comic Con, right? Yeah, you were busy. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was talking to millions of people, yeah. but uh, Julia actually came up to our table, yeah. and uh, so, how did you feel about like all the things, like when you when you when you came to the events and you went on the internet and you talked to people like me at the convention mm -hmm. and stuff like that? How did you feel about all the things? <laughs> <laughs> so when I. When I um, went out on my own and went on the internet and looked up 
steampunk. <laughs> I got very overwhelmed <laughs> because there are so many different punks and I don't know where I belong or I fit in or what I like. <laughs> I think the most important thing is what you like. Yeah, yeah. I think sometimes people can get grouped in with their friends, uh, but it's not really like... When I first uh, came to Winnipeg, I had already been involved in the Steampunk Empire, which was a website that existed many years ago and doesn't exist really in the same sense now. And there was like 15,000 people on there. Wow. Yeah, it was huge. And they had like a little chat room and stuff. It was a lovely experience. And I really felt felt that I fit in there because there was like a cornucopia of different types of people. And it was lovely because mm -hmm. you could talk to musicians, you talk to, you know, uh, belly dancers, all sorts mm -hmm. of people. And it was really interesting. And then uh, I decided to, like, like you re reach out and, 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 and meet real people, uh -huh. not online people. Right. And I came to Winnipeg, and I had friends in the steampunk community, but the problem was is that they were really into the Victorian steampunk. Now, there's nothing wrong with Victorian no. steampunk. No. It's quite lovely, and you can have a lot of fun with Victorian yeah. steampunk. Yeah. But... You wanted more variety. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think I fit just in that box. I think I fit into like lots of boxes, and I can't, I can't stay in one. Right. So you know, I would do diesel punk, or I would do Lolita uh, kind of steampunk and mm -hmm. stuff, and I was always kind of the only diesel punk in town. <laughs> <laughs> so it can be quite a little bit. You, you feel like a like a fish out of water sometimes mm -hmm. because your friends may be into one punk but you're really into another punk but then you have to leave your friends and get to know all brand new people right right so that can be a really kind of alienating experience as well so i guess what i'm getting at is find your punk mm -hmm. doesn't matter whether the people that are involved in that punk in your area are people you know because most of the time people are pretty accepting mm -hmm. And if you give it a good try and make a, a good, honest try on your first costume and you're enthusiastic and excited, people don't care. They'll just be like, yeah, come on, yeah. Let's, let's do it. Let's have yeah. fun. Yeah. <laughs> so now my question to you is, should you just jump in to the deep end? Or do you think that wading in is a better way to do it? I, th I think I should probably just say jump in the deep end i really do yeah like just just start doing it just dive in yeah. right don't do a belly flop just no. dive in <laughs> yeah well it's funny because julia did <laughs> wade in but then i came along and i just <laughs> dumped her in the deep end uh, because um and that's what often happens because there's a lot of personalities in steampunk that are so excited about the genre that when they meet people like julia they're like nah and they push you in. Yeah. <laughs> so poor Julia got pushed in the deep end. But it's okay, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I think you get. Uh, I think that if you're too timid and too afraid, then you don't really get to have all the shenanigans. Exactly. You don't have the experience. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we're very accepting of shy people too. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna force. <laughs> I'm not gonna force a poor shy person no. to like come out of their shell and be really uncomfortable um but you know it's punk mm -hmm. so I, I guess you could be a withdrawn shy punk that kind of has attitude right <laughs> just like mm. but for the most part uh people people are pretty accepting and they're and they'll get you out of your shell right mm -hmm. i did you i just took a crowbar <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> poor, poor julia <laughs> um all right so was figuring out your costume sort of the biggest hurdle that you experienced right so my first costume um was victorian steampunk okay <laughs> and that's that's a classic that's a classic yeah um yeah i i had no idea where <laughs> where it was going <laughs> but uh yeah i uh went online and and purchased just a Victorian top and a Victorian uh, black skirt and I uh, dazzled it up a little bit and that's what I wore to the uh, the tea 
To the midwinter. Or the midwinter yeah. feast. Yeah. yeah. <gasps> I think that a, a basic Victorian outfit is probably one of the first kind of beginner outfits that a lot of people do. Yeah. Can, you know, it's safe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Big skirt and blouse, yeah. you're good. Yeah. Right? And I think also diesel punk is a pretty good uh, beginner costume, too, mm -hmm. because it's really easy to put together. It's just all green army stuff. Yeah. And some guns. Yeah. And you're, <laughs> you're good. So um, now... A lot of people don't understand that the real fun in steampunk is not just creating a costume, but creating a persona to go along with your costume. Did you understand that when you first? No, I didn't. I didn't realize that you could create a, a persona, like be a different person. Yeah, be a completely different. It it didn't dawn on me, but you know. Um, it's helpful when you want to get out of your shell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really good for shy people. Yeah. Because you're not yourself. No. Right? Yeah. And you can be like, well, I'm not Julia today. I'm a sexy burlesque. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or I'm a, uh, what was that that you had a costume on the other day? Oh, the... yes. I was uh, the time-traveling air stewardess. Yes, yes. <laughs> Take your seat, sir, in the TARDIS. Yes. <laughs> Coffee or tea. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I don't think a lot of people realize that half the fun is the persona and building a backstory and all the shenanigans that you can have with other people. Yes. You know, like if you're an That's adventurer. Great conversation. Oh, you know? totally. Yeah. yeah, you can ham it up and have lots yeah. of fun and stuff. And like you said, you're being another person. So if you happen to be a bit shy, mm -hmm. you can kind of hide behind that persona and uh, still enjoy the experience. <laughs> Right? Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Because there are a lot of shy people. I'm just an incredible extrovert. <laughs> so I don't even understand that. Yeah. That's my problem. <laughs> I wish I was a little bit more shy. Yeah. Maybe my life would be a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, were you, I guess the, my question, I have to phrase this uh, diplomatically. Did you encounter any sort of resistance about the fabrics or the way that you wore your dress? Or, like, I guess what I'm trying to get at is any form of costume police. Did you encounter any of that when you joined the genre? No. No. <laughs> and that was really important to me. <laughs> because you have experience in costuming. I do. And what did you always kind of come up against? Um, when you're dealing with people who are historical reenactors, they're more focused on the accuracy of something, accuracy of the type of fabric, accuracy of the way you're sewing it, and the accuracy of the way the costume looks. But if you want to tweak something based on your own personality, um, maybe a you know, ruffle is not historically accurate for that dress, but you like it, then I would do it. But, you know, other people would possibly criticize that. Yeah, rain on your parade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's the nice thing about steampunk is that because we're not historically accurate, there is no raining on anyone's parade. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, we uh, practice a very firm policy on tolerance. Yes. Inclusiveness and kindness to all. This is yes. a very steampunk philosophy. Um, and it is our ultimate goal to make every person that comes to our events or enjoys our online uh, programming and seminars feel instantly at home in our group and that no one is ever treated as a stranger. No one away. Our society tries very hard to create an atmosphere of enjoyment under an overarching umbrella. There's the umbrella again of silliness. <laughs> so steampunks of all kinds can gather underneath its shelter to forget the troubles of the world and celebrate the wonders of the steampunk universe. And that's basically what we are in a nutshell, is uh, kind of a, a place to go if you want to just get away from it all and enjoy the genre which is the most important mm -hmm. thing to our events, I believe, and a lot of steampunks. They're there to enjoy steampunk, right? Mm -hmm. Not accuracy 
right? And all those other things, but the actual love of the genre. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're all about too. Um, we ask that our attendees and online members leave their baggage at the door and remain civil and tolerant at all times. An important note on tolerance and acceptance, this does not mean that it allows for rudeness or abuse. Bullying is a firm no. <laughs> We have people of every kind here in the society for the ethical treatment of Kraken who come to enjoy the creative hobby of this genre. And this means that there will be a varying types of costumings, personas, and people. Some people will be a little bit more modest in their mm -hmm. costumes. Some people will be a little bit more Sexy. risque. I mean, mm -hmm. I've got a bit of cleavage today. Yeah. and That's okay. No, that's okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, as long as you stay within... Uh, you know, the limits of the law. The law, exactly. <laughs> yes, that's important. And also, you know, tasteful. That's important too. I mean, as long as you're owning it with style, then, you know, whatever blows your hair back. Seriously. Mm -hmm. um, this means that SCTK will not suffer the costume police kindly. And I've often told my guests and members, if someone tells you you're not steampunk, you come get me. And I'll go and I will tell them, you're not steampunk. Because that's just not the steampunk attitude. You know, steampunk is very, very inclusive, very accepting. And uh, this is a fantastical and imaginative community of creatives. We have no room in the carriage for people <laughs> who rain on other people's parades. Yeah, yeah. No, no umbrellas for them. <laughs> they can get rained on. <laughs> um, there are no real costume rules. Uh, we make it up as you, as you, as we go, um, based on what you love about the universe. This could be diverse or very specific. So you like a mishmash of punks um, and stuff, and then there are some people who just like diesel punk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's that. And that's okay. Yeah, and they don't want to put on a big long skirt. It's yeah, not their thing. That's their style. So that's okay. That's okay. Um, we ask for real world politics to be kind of. It's, it's really not um, mentioned. Mm -hmm. We're not interested. Our hobby is based on fiction, and we prefer to keep it that way. So it's like a politics-free zone. Mm -hmm. uh, people come to the group to escape the world for a while and to find a place to recharge, mm -hmm. to regroup, uh, find kindred spirits in their hobby, and enjoy some mischievous shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the shenanigans, seriously. <laughs> and steampunk... Wow, there are a lot of shenanigans. <laughs> right, Julia? Yes. I mean, how many shen shenanigans have I, I roped you into? This is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do have to say, poor Julia, um, I have years of being on camera, so being on camera is no big deal to me. Um, Julia, on the other hand, this is her first time, really. Uh, she's kind of a, a, a noob when it comes to being on camera, but... I love her. I think, you know, it's it's wonderful having you with me. I don't like to be a camera hog. The society isn't my face. And you're, and you're not hogging. I'm just not. Yeah, I just end up being the only one that's that wants to be on. I don't want to be on camera. I'm just the only person that does it. Right? So I dragged Julia here, and uh, I'm giving her a brand new experience on, on what it feels like to be uh, part of steampunk. And I think that a lot of our group will probably end up being online for the next little while just due to the pandemic. So you probably should get used to it. Too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, now, uh, steampunk, it, I, I just want to make a further note on modesty because you see a lot of people getting very upset and negative online if there's a bit of a risque picture. And, you know... There are obviously parameters around these costumes, but, you know, steampunk can have a range of modesty in its costumings. Mm -hmm. While we ask that you do not exceed the modesty that the laws of the land dictate, yes. yes, we also will not shame a member of the community for being proud of their person. I'm 50, and I'm proud of my person. <laughs> I don't mind a little bit of cleavage, <laughs> yep. you know, and, and some people don't like yep. cleavage. So I will sometimes indulge in a cheeky and sexy outfit. It's important that we do not shame people for wearing costumes that may be a tad risque, yet tasteful. It's up to your personal comfort level. And if these people are really enjoying 
um, these costumes, then I think that we should be, you know, allowing it and permissive of it and enjoying mm -hmm. it as well. There's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. So steampunk is a stick it to the man and a very risque genre. You get a lot of, um, well, risque behavior, especially in humor. <laughs> yeah. If you go into some of the groups and you and you read the, the memes and the jokes and mm -hmm. stuff like that, they can get a bit, well, you know, um, body, <laughs> if you want to use the word. So we're all about pushing limits, uh, cheeky humor, risking things, uh, but with safety nets as well and you know obviously parameters uh thinking irreverently that's why we are always putting punk at the end of our name like <laughs> steampunk yeah. diesel punk cyberpunk because there's always a stick it to the man in there regardless of what we do could be sci-fi it could be anachronistic <laughs> mm -hmm. but there's always a punk at the end of it uh, we know that this community can have some pretty strong personalities that can come at you like a hurricane. Uh, we have a lot of really um, passionate artists mm -hmm. and, and, and people like that. So, um, you know, we all have our passions, but just remember that if you meet up with someone who's really enthusiastic and passionate, just remember that they're not attacking you. Mm -hmm. They're just really excited about what they do and mm -hmm. what they contribute. And so, you know, step back and go, this person is an artist and uh, just enjoy the, the, the passion and, and get caught up in it and excited mm -hmm. about it. It's important that we all remain within reasonable constraints on how we treat one another, dictating to someone how they can dress or act or think or create is kind of a line that we don't, we don't cross here mm -hmm. at SETK. Uh, civility is the key. I mean, we joke around mm -hmm. and stuff, but in the end, we all are friends and feelings are important and we don't really want to step on people very much, right? So, um, steampunk is an incredibly creative genre. That's what it's all about. It celebrates the DIY upcycling lifestyle and is incredibly imaginative in how it uses everyday items to create nice. like uh, fantastical yes. devices. Yes. I mean, trumpets, they make into like guns. Mm -hmm. um, the inventions that they make, mm -hmm. the lamps, mm -hmm. just crazy with like pipes and stuff like that. It's awesome. Uh, steampunk is a genre rife with artists and creatives. If you're looking for a creative community, well, this is the community for you. It's <laughs> chock full of artists and uh, you've come to the right place. I mean, you're, you're an artist in a way, too. I mean, you create beautiful costuming. So you're an artist. I am. Yes, oh. you are. Yeah, you do beautiful work, Julia. Thank you. And some of Julia's work is going to be in the store that we will be selling. I'm very proud of it. Julia does a lovely job. So uh, she is um, a formally trained costumer. I know, I know, I can't, I shouldn't do this. She's going to kick me after this is all over. But I can't uh, say enough about, um, you know, people should be proud of uh, the things that they make and enjoy them for what they are. So, Julia, um, this genre runs the gamut of creatives and its platforms. It is a literary genre. There are films and TV shows, radio plays, theater, drama, music, art exhibits, costuming collectives, um, mad hatters. I do hats. And I'm a little mad. <laughs> so uh, those that build, build devices from mm -hmm. upcycled products um, or objects, um, gun modders, photographers, everything you can think of, comedians, performers, all of that, uh, they're all found in steampunk. I think steampunk just kind of draws them to it like a mm -hmm. magnet mm -hmm. because it's a huge and, and immense um, creative universe. Um, there's a gentleman that is a, a doctor of hysteria. Oh, <laughs> and he does kind of a shtick. It's quite funny. I love it. Um, so like there's uh, new things. People are thinking of new things all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's the wonderful thing about creatives. Mm -hmm. They never sit still. Yes. Like me. <laughs> I think sometimes when I'm talking to you on the phone, I'm like, Julia, I think we're going to do this today. And then this and this and this. And you're like, do we have enough time in 24 hours? <laughs> <laughs> I have to stick some hours in there. <laughs> but I, I think that, uh, that that just about covers everything about steampunk. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope that we've given you sort of an understanding of what it's like to be in the community um, and what steampunk sort of is. Um, 
and uh, and whether you like it or not, uh, whether it whether it's something that you'd be interested in, um, and also sort of what what the whole genre means to the Society for the Ethical Treatment of Kraken. So this is the sort of the end of the seminar, but I thought it was important to let Julia ask me some questions because you know. What are the sort of foremost questions that you would that a new person would like to ask someone like me? Um, so what what sort of got you started in steampunk? You had mentioned the steampunk empire, right? Yes. Was that your first foray into it? <laughs> I loved to read as a kid, mm -hmm. and I always liked inventing things and strange devices and all these kind of things. So I read Jules Verne. Mm -hmm. um, I read a lot of sort of steampunky type sci-fi novels. Uh, and I think that was sort of a leader up to the steampunk empire because I never really knew that was steampunk. I didn't know there was a thing like mm -hmm. steampunk until I stumbled upon the steampunk empire. And at that time, there wasn't as much stuff on the internet about steampunk. It wasn't like huge like it is now um so it was kind of poking around poking around and then i found this group and it was like these people are like me <laughs> that's awesome yeah. and then i started talking to people and and i just got sucked in yeah. so i would say probably i had some earlier exposure to it in literature mm -hmm. and maybe in some movies mm -hmm. but yeah i think you're right it was the steampunk empire that kind of drew me in mm -hmm. and, and that it was over after that it was steampunk or nothing for me <laughs> what was your first um, artistic endeavor? Was it a prop, a costume? Oh, uh... God. You're talking to a woman that doesn't just do little things. <laughs> no, I know. Right? <laughs> um, my first endeavor was uh, we were doing a television show at the time at a local TV station called Subgenres Winnipeg. Yeah. And we were covering all of the genres, like uh, goth and uh, like the music and everything like that. Uh, and so we wanted a fundraiser. And we had a lovely museum in Winnipeg called the Dalnavert <laughs> Museum. And I wanted to do a photo shoot there. So we decided to make a steampunk calendar. Oh. And that was my first endeavor, is making, uh, doing like five different photo shoots in like five different museums. <laughs> in We did the, the train one, the, oh. the Prairie Dog Express, uh, the Manitoba Museum, yeah. the, pir the pirate one. Yeah. We did the Dalnavert, which was Victorian. Yeah. And then we did um, sort of more gothy. We did it in studio at Shaw with a green screen. Yeah. And uh, the fifth one was a burlesque one in studio as well. Right. But yeah, we, we it was crazy. It, yeah, really crazy. Yeah. Like we did five huge photos, like 20 people, 20 models. Wow. It was nuts. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't just build a prop. No. <laughs> I, I built a calendar. Yeah. Maybe Tash. Bite off a little, little, little smaller <laughs> bites, but that's me. So uh, a lot of people, I think, start off with just building a costume or a prop yeah. or something like that. And what made you sort of uh, decide to start getting into events? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, insanity. That's what made me get into, into event, <laughs> event building. Insanity. Um well, actually, what made me interested in events is that we live in the center of Canada in a big city that has a really small town mm -hmm. vibe to it. And there really wasn't any steampunk events that were going on that were like the events that I dreamed of in my head, mm -hmm. the vision that I had mm -hmm. in my head. Mm -hmm. um, there was no real um, group established that did specifically like a lot of activities mm -hmm. like uh you know the the midwinter feast or the tea or whatever mm -hmm. and so i just i took it upon myself <laughs> to create these events because i always wanted to go to these events and they weren't being held so i figured you know what i'm just gonna make them mm -hmm. happen and that's what made me do it and it was a, a really scary yet exciting endeavor that you need to be really relentless. <laughs> but I think people enjoy enjoy the experiences. And that's the whole point of the events is to enjoy an experience that you've always wanted to experience. And I think that's what a lot of event planners do is create what they always wanted to go to. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's what made me go into events. There wasn't anything going on here. Yeah. So I had to make it happen.
Well, thank you for doing that. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I think some people think I'm crazy, but that's okay. <laughs> we have fun. Yes, we do. So, um, do you have any more questions? Um, I was actually wondering about uh, Miss Mumford. Miss Mumford. Uh, her her persona. Where and... she came from? Yes. Oh, you know, everything I do seems to come by by a, a situation in which I have to like pull stuff out of um, out of my bum. <laughs> Because I have to do something. Yeah. And uh, when we were doing the TV show, um, the calendar, I wanted to make every photo in the calendar tell a story. Because right. I figured most calendars with the static, right. like people standing in front of the stuff, right. just like, I'm a steampunk, gets really boring. You want people actively involved in the scene. Yeah. So each uh, month, I had a photo in which people were like, actively involved. So I needed sort of a persona for one of the images. It was really important. It was like a committee meeting from a church or like, you know, those, uh, yeah. the suffragettes, you know, like we have a cause, right? So what we did was we created the Society for the Ethical Treatment of Kraken and all of us stuffy Victorians were photographed sitting around the table, the dining room table at the Downover with our signs in the background, <laughs> be kind to Kraken, yeah. you know, save the Kraken and stuff. And Miss Mumford was, was there. She was the president mm. of the uh, Society for the Ethical Treatment of Kraken. And after that calendar was made, in fact, our cameraman, Doug, was in that calendar. <laughs> he does a great job, especially the kitchen, one where the Kraken is coming out of the pot. Oh. And, and he's reading the newspaper and he's like, oh, it's a great, great shot. So, um, yeah, Miss Mumford kind of grew from that. And then I decided to do a fringe play. Why? I guess, I don't know. I just figured I'd do it. And I figured that it would be fun to do a mummy unwrapping. Mm. Because Victorians used to do mummy unwrappings and that's insane. Right. With tea and, and scones with a, a mummy in your living room. And so uh, I used Miss Mumford as a persona for that, for that, that play. And yeah, it just kind of... It was like just never ending, Miss mm -hmm. Mumford, Miss Mumford, Miss Mumford. But I, I mean, I enjoy Miss Mumford, but I'm not always Miss Mumford. It's, it's fun to be like, today I'm in Prairie Punk, uh, so Grand Plains Prairie Punk, so I can just be like, you know, somebody else entirely who's like maybe a little bit more, um, I don't know, casual. Because Miss Mumford is very society oriented. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's where Miss Mumford comes from. That's awesome. Thank yeah. you for answering my question. You're welcome. <laughs> that was actually my first costume, too. Oh. So yeah, Miss Mumford. <laughs> but yeah. Memories. <laughs> um, just remember, steampunk is all about thinking, outthinking the kraken, you know, thinking outside of the box, creative self-expression, the freedom to soar to the heights of imagination. So it's really, you know, do some surfing on the internet, find kindred spirits, go to an event, take a leap of faith, explore something new. Uh, find an old steampunk and have a conversation, ask questions, find a mentor to help you kind of guide you through the initial stages like like Julia did. <laughs> um, we're always keen on, on, on just, uh, you know, helping people out. Mm -hmm. uh, looking through social media for the different steampunk groups is a great way to meet people. Social media has a lot of steampunk groups on there, all different kinds. Mm -hmm. And so if you're looking for a group, check them out and see if you like the people and you know, just dive right in. Mm -hmm. Most people are pretty friendly. Um, the Society for the Ethical Treatment of Kraken is always here to answer any questions. And if you're looking for a mentor, well, we <laughs> hope that you'll be able to find a steampunk in our membership that will reach out and help you. You can ask people questions anytime. We've got lots of people, uh, different kinds that you can, you know, uh, comment and and maybe even mm -hmm. private message and, and ask questions if mm -hmm. you want to and you can even contact me I don't mind I don't mind questions at all <laughs> um, I've been answering them for years so uh, <laughs> steampunk doesn't have to be scary or overwhelming and we hope that you will come to join us for a cuppa sometime and uh, please join us for our yearly in-person convention called the Society for the Ethical Treatment of Kraken's Tea and Bazaar it's a mouthful I know I say it all the time. <laughs> um, and when the plague has run its course and the world is well again, hopefully we can all sit down for a nice cup of tea together. 
And this event, the, the Bazaar, tea, we call it the Tea for short, uh, is held every year on the second weekend of June. And we'd love to meet you. Uh, stay safe and stay well. And till we meet again, my steamy friends, top of the day.